All right. I have Jimmy Lawson on the show now. He's coming off a big win at LFA 114 over Anthony Garrett in the very first round. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm just getting out of training. Uh, I'm already back in the gym. Um, you know, we're preparing for our next opportunity. Yeah, and as I was telling you before we went live, I, I can't wait to see what is next for you. I'm sure it's just going to continue to get bigger and better as your career uh, unfolds. Let, let's talk about that that recent win at LFA. I, I watched the video, and, man, that, that was a brutal knockout. You you put him out cold. Was that the game plan to, to go in there to really show your, your stand-up here in this fight and, and, you know, show the rest of the heavyweights out there that, you know, you're, you're not a one-trick pony. You're not just a wrestler. You can do it all. Um, I mean, my game plan, uh, for the most part is start with the, you know, just base the basics. I mean, I think if you stay with that, you're, you're fine. Um, you know, I use my jab to, to range find and, uh, you know, it just happened to be there. It felt natural when we were exchanging and, you know, I got a, I got a pretty nice knockout at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's great to add to the resume. What, what is it like fighting for LFA? They're clearly one of the biggest promotions in the country. I mean, out there on the West coast, they're, they're doing big things and it's kind of like a, a pipeline straight to the UFC. What, what is that like to fight for the promotion? Um, you know, after that first opportunity I got, um, with Dana White's looking for a fight, uh, down in Florida, uh, he was commentating. Uh, Kamar Usman was commentating. Matt Sarah was, was there commentating. Um, that was a that was a big opportunity. So, I think now I'm I'm definitely ready for the moment. And uh, you know, right now my skills are just growing. LFA was was a nice put together promotion, but I feel like that first opportunity prepared me for any big show. Yeah, and I want to get this this right to make sure I understand this because I was looking at your record on Tapology before we we did this interview. You were scheduled to fight Jorgen De Castro at Contender Series. This was, I guess, before you even made your pro debut. Is is that correct? Yes. Yes. That's crazy. I, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. How did that all come about? Because usually you got to go out there and string together some wins before you get on Contender Series, and you're getting the shot before you even made your pro debut. Um, well, a lot, well, what a lot of people don't know about me is when I first started training for MMA, um, I started training at uh, American Kickboxing Academy out in San Jose, California. Um, you know, at that time, I didn't know if I was going to go out there and do this full time. I had just got done with an opportunity with the Jets. Uh, my football dreams kind of ended at that moment. And I said, what the hell, I'm going to go for it. And, you know, around this time, DC was preparing for uh, Stipe Miocic the first time. And he was using me as a training partner for the wrestling aspect. You know, I was I was learning the basics of MMA, but mostly the wrestling. And over time, I, I progressed, and you know, I was already signed to Zinc and Management um, with along with DC and you know some of the greats like Kane. So I had that full arsenal of knowledge pool to to, to pick from. And over time, for those two years, I. I took my time training and developing MMA skills. And, you know, when I got that opportunity, uh, they thought it was right for me. Um, you know, I think there was things I could have did better. Uh, you know, the MMA game is definitely weird at first. It's a different pace than wrestling. You know, wrestling, you just go, go, go. And you're trying to break someone in MMA. It's a lot more calculated chess. You have to conserve your energy because there's just so much going on. Yeah, and, you know, with the heavyweight division, too, I mean, all you guys have a, an insane amount of power. Do you notice, like, uh, is the, I guess, the weightlifting aspect or some of the other, uh, you know, cardio and exercises that you have to do to be prepared to be inside of the cages, is it any different than football or wrestling, or is there some real, real significant similarities? Uh, there's a lot of similarities to wrestling because you're looking for – endurance and attrition you know wrestling tournaments last all day you know you're not always going to put your best in the cage but five minutes that that was the, that was one of the hardest thing going from being three minute two minute two minute to every round being five minutes and then learning how to pace yourself because you know when you wrestle like that just wears on your arms and wears on your kicking and stuff like that so you got to know how to pace yourself and you got to really take time to figure out what type of fighter you could be you know, and really change your body. Like, as for me, when I first started, I had a football body. And while I had the, the crazy power, my shoulders would always give out. And I had to learn how to build my muscles to be able to deal with that. 
how difficult was that when you, I guess, I don't know if it was a decision that you really made or if you just had to come to the realization that football was no longer going to be in your future and MMA very well could be. Was that a hard thing to do, to, to make that switch and to go from one sport to another? Um, I was definitely heard about it. I had already signed uh, with Zinkin, so I'd already been a part of like a, like that, that whole organization with, or, with AKA long before I decided to give up football. I had went through like arena football and then um, the opportunity with the Jets came and I went up to Fauner Park for a workout and, you know, it came after a long time of just waiting for that opportunity. So I, I feel like there was some discouragement. I wasn't at my best when I got the opportunity. So for me and myself, I could say I had to give it up because if I really wanted it, I would have kept working the whole time, you know. And when I came to MMA, I fell in love with it, not just for the competing aspect, but just for it, it changed my whole lifestyle, my whole way of thinking. Yeah, I'm sure you're still following football and, and the NFL. What, what do you think about this upcoming season? Give me your way too early Super Bowl prediction. Uh, well, I'm a homer, so I'm, I'm definitely going to predict the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Uh Versus the Steelers. That would be a, a dream game. You know, my, my whole family's full of Steelers fans. I'm an Eagles fan, so that would be a dream game. Uh, realistically, I got to say Tampa Bay and probably the Chiefs again, honestly. Yeah, that seems like a safe pick. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I'm from New England. I am a diehard Patriots fan. I'm still hurting that, that Tom Brady uh, jetted to go to Tampa. But, hey, it, it is what it is. They got a good squad around them down there. Um, I, I did want to just get your take, too, on, you know, football players making that transition to MMA. Do you think that we're going to see a lot more people like yourself that, you know, maybe when that football dream dies that they're going to make the, the transition to MMA? Because it just seems like the sport is just getting bigger and bigger every day. Um. I mean, we could, but I mean, I'm one. I'm I'm a rare case. Like, uh, I was on full scholarship for wrestling and for football, so like, it was just it wasn't really a hard transition for me to start doing MMA just because I had been wrestling so long. And then, you know, when you wrestle at a school like Penn State, you know, there's nothing quite like that. So you prepare for every opportunity, you know. Um, and as far as football. As far as football, I feel like uh, a lot of athletes can make that transition. I see a lot more athletes like doing like boxing training, like especially football players doing like boxing training in the off season because it helps with your hands and like that's a different type of cardio. Like, like I never had abs before until I started doing MMA, and that wasn't because for for lifting weights and stuff like that. Not even really for my diet. It was all the twisting and turning and just the constant training, getting ready for those five minute rounds. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Tell me a little bit about AKA and just your time there. Is do you feel like maybe you can go, you're gonna go back there at some point and get working, or are you happy with where you're at now in Jersey? No, I'm definitely gonna go back and get working. I'm, I'm still, I still have a lot of friends out there that I came up with, and I still talk to Coach Hob and you know, um, D, I talk to DC here and there, but um, I still just have a lot of connections out there, so I'm definitely going to go back there and uh, get some training in. It's, uh, it's been a little bit of a weird time with this whole COVID. I, I initially wouldn't have moved home at all, but my mother uh, had got cancer when I had my first fight in Jersey. So it was like uh, when I was fighting Edwin Smart, they didn't tell me until I had already came home. They didn't want to tell me during my camp. So when I came home and I won the fight, that's when they told me she had breast cancer and I made the, the sacrifice to stay home and help pay for bills and stuff like that as we go through that process. Now, you know, COVID situation is getting a little bit better, even though this whole Delta thing's got everybody worried. And uh, But she's in remission. She's doing a lot better than what she was beforehand. So now I'm really open to going out there. But, you know, I've definitely found a home base in, in Jersey and, um, you know, the people I'm working with. I'm at Killer B MMA, but I do train in Nick Catone's. Um, I train with Corey Anderson at Nicotones and uh you know it's nothing but love um you know that's why when I when I come out when I came out to that fight um for LFA and they said where I was when they announced where I was from I said the Jersey Shore because I get my training in all over Jersey you know I'm, I'm I rep Jersey to the fullest I, I get my jiu-jitsu down at uh Tom DeBlasses and Lacey I, I uh, Catones on Saturdays for sparring with Corey Anderson and my main striking coach is Brian Wright which is an ocean which is an Oakhurst at uh, Killer B Combat Sports Academy. 
very happy here that your mother's in remission. Family is the most important thing. You clearly are a, a great son. So uh, glad to hear that everything's good with your family there, man. As far as the, the training partner aspect of things go now, you mentioned Corey Anderson. Is there anyone else that like are your main partners, you know, as you're in Jersey getting ready for fights? Yes, but uh, forgive me if he watches this interview because I might butcher his last name. It's uh, Hamdi Amdouahib. Uh, he was a, a Greco Olympian for Egypt. Um, I, he trained at uh, he trained at one of the Gracie schools up in New York, and, uh, and some of those guys. But he trains down at Killer B with me now, and you know he's a big, strong kid. He has, he's, you know, he obviously he has very good wrestling. He's Olympic level. So I mean, that's a that's a this two different looks. And then I have Carl Robertson, which. If anybody pays attention to his MMA, if I need to work on my striking, there's not too many people that you know could bring it like he can. Yeah, no doubt about it. UFC fighter right there. Now, you, you did lose your uh, debut as a professional fighter, then strung together three straight finishes. So you looked really good these last three fights. What did you learn from that loss in your debut? And, and how have you grown, clearly, as you have uh, in, as a mixed martial artist? Um. I've matured just as, not just as a fighter, but as, as a man, like I, I make my own workouts, you know, before I was doing what everybody else was telling me to do. And while that might be a good thing, it wasn't working for me. You know, I didn't leave myself any time for recovery. You know, I didn't take my training and my sleep as, as serious. I feel like part of it was just starstruck. I just thought, you know, because I was training with those guys and getting hard training, I was going to, you know, that was just going to naturally get very good you know I had to do a lot of um, self-improvements on my own and work on my weaknesses and you know I feel like I made the most improvements when I came home and I had nothing to do but focus on myself you know uh, I think that was the, the biggest difference in my game okay and the heavyweight limit is 265 how big do you get like what, what are you normally walking around at uh, while you're in camp man after this after this layoff I honestly, when I started training, I started training back in November. That's when I got back in the gym. I was off as soon as like COVID started all the way to then, you know, going back and forth to the hospital, just working two jobs and stuff like that. But I got back in the gym around November. I was coming down then from 305. But at that point, I wasn't really trying to cut weight. I was just trying to sharpen my skills. And, you know, I was doing shit on my own, but I wasn't really in the gym with anybody else. And then I would say about Three months before this most recent fight, I had lost like 40 pounds, 40 to 35 pounds in the course of like two and a half months, just training nonstop, going to um, elite wrestling. I'm, I'm a wrestling coach there. Uh, Steve Rivera keeps that room at like 100 degrees, 98 degrees, and I wear like a 30-pound weight vest and sweatsuit. So I was busting ass to, to cut this weight. Um a lot of hard work, but uh, by the time the fight came around, my body was feeling great. Yeah. So, do you feel like being around that, you know, 260 mark is going to be good for you moving forward? Like, if you can just stay right around there and not have to come down from 300 here moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. No, I plan on staying around like 270, 275. Uh, it's an, it's a comfortable cut uh, for me. I mean, it really wasn't a cut. If you saw the weigh-in, I weighed in at. 259 so i mean with just the natural training the preparation i do before my fights i naturally would just lose weight okay and it seems like you're on a fast track to make it to the ufc man what is next when can we expect to see you fight next and will it be maybe for a contender series or do you feel like you'll be back for lfa um right now right now we're we're definitely exploring some options um maybe lfa we're definitely looking to you know make an appearance in the ufc uh but i'm gonna talk it out with uh with paradigm and my coaches uh right now i just want to focus on getting better uh, i'm knocking dudes out i enjoy doing that i'm getting my skills better when i get to the ufc i want to be unstoppable I, I i know i have some things i need to work on in my game that other people they watch film on me they can see with my game so i'm trying to get to the point where i'm unstoppable so whenever that is, that's when we're going to get to the UFC and take over. One guy that comes to mind immediately when, when I think about maybe a matchup for you in the UFC 
is another guy that was in the NFL, uh, Greg Hardy. And, and he's not doing so bad, man, in there. Is, is that a fight that intrigues you? Do you feel like that could make sense for a matchup uh, early on if you do get, make it to the UFC here soon? Um, I feel like that. I feel like that could make sense. But again, I'm not really into picking opponents. I kind of just go for whoever they put in front of me. You know, I feel like to be the best, you got to go through them all anyway. So whoever they put in front of me, uh, we're going to go with that. All right. Last question. Tell me who wins the uh, upcoming heavyweight title whenever that's announced between Nganu and Gon. Hmm. I feel like if I feel like Cyril Gon's the more consistent fighter, but I feel like if Nganu's on point, he he knocks him out. Um, you know, what we've yet to see is how much Nganu's gas tank has improved. So, I mean, I'm as interested as everybody else to see how he does in the second, third, fourth round if it goes that far. Because I don't think Cyril Gan's going to be the type to stand in front of him like everybody else does when they get when their back's against the cage. You know, he moves a lot. He, he's a very aware of where his feet are and how close people are to hitting him. Um, I'm going to go with Nganu. I'm going to go okay. with him. All right. I, I, I would not be surprised if, if Nganu wins at all. And, and you might have a future, too, as an analyst sitting next to D.C. It's a good little technical breakdown right there, man. So keep that in your, your back pocket here. Uh, but listen, pleasure interviewing you here for the first time. Before I let you go, I want to tell people uh, where to find you on social media. So go ahead and do that. And if you have anyone uh, to thank, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Jimmy Lawson. Uh, my Instagram is Jimmy Lawson underscore I, I, I. Um, I'd like to thank you, Ryan Jarrell, for having me. Um, you know, obviously my team, Paradigm, Killer BMMA, uh, the whole Jersey Shore, well, Jersey behind me. So I appreciate uh, all the support and I uh, appreciate you just having me, man.